Hi, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional traveler. Today we're reviewing the Western Mountaineering Versalite. The Western Mountaineering Versalite. Boy, this is one fluffy, warm bag. I'm going to give you a review today of what it's like to sleep in it and experience this bag. But before I do, if you wouldn't mind, just hitting the subscribe button, that helps me continue to bring you this information. And also, if you wouldn't mind leaving me a comment on the bottom, that way I know if you're getting something out of these videos, and please provide me with an idea of something else you would like to see. Thank you very much. So, the Western Mountaineering Versalite bag. You can see this bag right here is actually quite, quite fluffy. Now, one of the reasons I chose Western Mountaineering is they have arguably the best construction of any of the sleeping bags on the market. So I'm going to show you a couple of the different features about this bag. So the very first thing is you can see that if I'm laying down outside the bag, it's actually really fluffed up. Now, that's because they use uh, this 850 goose down. It sounds like this gold technical term, but what it comes down to is that's the best down available to make your bag loft and keep you warm. Now, the whole theory about these bags is the more loft you have, the warmer you are. So if you have a really huge bag, like my bison bag, I'll put a link to that video below as well then you stay warmer. However, my bison bag is ridiculously huge. This Versalite bag still packs down to wherever it is. Right here, this Versalite bag actually still packs down to this little bag that I'm gonna show you there. So the first thing you'll notice is the loft on this bag. Western Mountaineering rates the chest loft as six inches. So let's zoom in here and see if that is actually the case. So we'll have the cameraman zoom in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and keep my measurement stick level, and I'm gonna begin compressing the bag down, and you'll see in the chest, it has over eight inches of loft. Now, Western Mountaineering rates this bag as at least six inches of loft, so this thing, for me, is really fluffy. Now, the bag, is rated to minus 10 degrees and here let me uh, show you down in the leg area we'll uh, do this again all right so that gets almost five six inches of loft that's actually really crazy for a bag that's this small now i'll, I'll put a link to below to amazon so you can check that out as well but as you can see the loft on this part of the chest is between six and eight inches depending on where you measure it and just just for uh, happenstance sake because everybody who suffers with freezing feet let me show you the loft in the foot area so let me try and be as semi-scientific as possible and i will begin pushing that down and that is almost eight inches of loft as well so and just to give you an idea let me fluff this bag up i'm going to stand with my feet less scientific but just to give you a sense of scale for how much fluff there is in there so you can see the bag really wraps around my feet it's pretty surprising now it's going to take a minute for the bag to fluff up this bag is rated for 10 degrees that's 10 degrees fahrenheit which is I don't know, whatever it is in Celsius, sorry, I forgot the number, but uh, that is a really warm bag. You can take this down to some pretty cold temperatures to be camping in. Now, the thing about Western Mountaineering bags, and that's why I like them, by the way, I'm not sponsored by them. I don't receive free bags. I'm just telling you this because I like to share my experience with the gear I use, is that their 10 degree rating means comfort. So if I'm sleeping in this bag, and it's 10 degrees, I'm still plenty warm. I could arguably take this bag down to probably minus 15, and it would be a little bit chilly, but I would survive. Now, would I do that? No, but the fact that I can do this, I've taken my Megalite, which is rated at 30 degrees, and taken that all the way down to five degrees on a camping trip, I just didn't expect it to get that cold. I was cool. But I survived, as you can see here, all my toes and all my fingers. So let's get right into the features of this bag. Now you can purchase a bag, a Western Mountaineering bag, that either has a right side zipper or a left side zipper. And 
You have that feature, you can actually mate these bags as well. So if you have two different bags with a left and right zipper, if you uh, want to snuggle up with somebody, you, you certainly can. So uh, I'll, I'll show you that here. So why don't we, uh, we'll take the camera off the tripod there and we're going to come over here and show you some of the features of the bag. So a couple different features on this particular bag. And the first nice thing is that they have this little Velcro catch here where it covers up the zipper and that's really nice because it keeps it from unzipping and going down. You'll notice they use YKK zippers on here as well and they do provide, well it says it's Western Mountaineering little pull tab and that's really handy. Now the bag zip is super easy. This quality of the zipper, I don't know, that YKK stuff is really handy. But you'll notice inside that Western Mountaineering has put in this stiffener fabric along the bag. So you've got this, but this stiffener fabric actually helps prevent snagging when you zip up the bag. Now, there isn't a stiffener on the outside of the bag, so I do occasionally snag the outside, but my trick is to zip the bag from the outside instead of the inside, so that's a feature I'll show you in a moment. Now, this bag also has a face and a neck baffle. That's huge for keeping warm. The bag also on the bottom has a zipper here as well. So if you need to be less warm, that's very handy. And you'll see, let's see, new down consisting, oh, oh, there it is. <laughs> For those of you who really care, you'll notice that little American flag there, made in the USA. This is made up in San Jose, California. If a made in America definitely matters to you, this is pretty sweet. So you've got that bottom zipper. The zipper obviously isn't going to go all the way around the bottom because you want your foot area to stay warm. But now I'm going to show you what it's like to get in this bag. Now, I am six feet tall. I'm six feet tall and I sleep on a three-quarter Z rest. So you can see what the three-quarter Z rest is versus the bag, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'll lay down and if I'm going to scrunch all the way down, you can see that the bag is pretty much six inches or thus above my head. So if you're six inches tall, do not buy the six foot or six inches tall. If you're six feet tall, don't buy the six foot bag. Buy the six foot six because you'll be able to crunch that on yourself a bit more and bundle up. Now you don't want to buy an overkill bag. If you're five foot six, don't buy the six foot six. You're just wasting weight. So what I'm going to do is show you what it's like to get in this bag here. You just simply unzip. And I'm going to put this on the Z-Rest because the hardwood floor is kind of unpleasant. And now the super secret trick to zipping up these things is not to use the inside zipper. Instead, I actually use the outside zipper and pull like this because it prevents snagging of the bag. Now I'm going to wriggle my way down here. Okay. All right, and come on up here and you'll see how this all works. So come right up here. Okay, and I zip it all the way from the outside. I know it's a little bit awkward, but it seems to work and prevent snags. And there we go. And I type that here. Now I've got this neck baffle that I can draw a string around my neck and I'll show you the Velcro in a minute. But it's got this whole Velcro system in here. So I'm able to put this little Velcro job in here and Velcro the neck in. And there's a draw cord that I can pull this in and draw the cord around my neck. And what that does is it prevents cold drafts from getting into my chest and legs. Now, is this a little bit of a claustrophobic experience? So you can pull the neck baffle down and then the hood baffle down comes like this and then you can tuck this bag so just your mouth and nose are out there so you're not breathing in the bag. Now, I'm already broiling. I'm starting to sweat. It's super hot. It's about 72 degrees in the room. <laughs> and I'm, I'm already literally sweating. So it didn't take too long for that bag to kick over. So let me unzip here. Oh, and just to kind of look at the loft here, 
You can see I've got my hands to my sides at the moment, and there's still plenty of room to wriggle around. I'm about 170 pounds, so there's still plenty of space in this bag. I'm pushing my arms up. All right, let me get out and get unzipped before I start <laughs> sweating up a storm. <laughs> Ugh. All right. Oh, death, huh? Now, one of the nice things about this bag is that they have a continuous baffle system. And what that means is if you see here, these channels where the down runs around, each of these is a channel or a baffle where the down runs around the bag. So what you can do is if you take the bag and let's say it's a really cold night, I need more down on my chest. So what I can actually do is take the bag and whip it like this, whip it like this, and that actually drives more down into the chest area of the bag. And now you can see there's less down in here and I'm mushing it anyway, so I don't care. And then this area is much thicker with down. So if it's a cold night, you can actually thicken up the chest area of the bag and make it much warmer. That's a really nice feature of the Extreme Light series in the Western Mountaineering bags and in bags. But let's say, hey, it's, I brought a 10 degree bag and it's like 30 degrees and I am broiling. This is too hot. I've unzipped the side and I can't handle it. You simply <laughs> fuff the bag the other direction and then we'll actually drive the down onto the other side of the bag and you will notice now that this isn't nearly as lofty as compared to this side. So it actually has a way to vary the amount of loft and thus warmth in the sleeping bag. It's a really slick system and I've used that quite a few times in my camping experience. That way I can take a slightly warmer bag and then adjust based on my experience of what the temperature is. So that's uh, pretty slick there. Now let me show you the, the baffle system while we've got this bag open. Why don't you come over here and I'll show you. So this neck baffle is really, really handy. And what that does is there is a Velcro strap and you just simply strap that around and it finishes the connection. And now this little drawstring over here, you begin tightening it up and you can see that would tighten up around your neck. And thus you can tighten that up and not get so cold. And then your second layer, this is actually an expedition style bag, even though it's the extreme light. And then you can tighten this up on top as well and have a really warm system. I love that feature. And for a two pound bag, that's actually really, really incredible to have something that is a feature in an extreme light, less expensive bag, but it has expedition quality design on it. So uh, for, for this type of bag and this grade and price point and everything, you really are getting a light duty expedition bag for a regular high quality bag price. Now, my dad also has one of these sleeping bags and I'm gonna have him on here to talk about that for a moment. Yeah, hey, I've been camping since I was a boy scout and I've been in scouting for about 50 years, uh, actually. And of course, in those days, we had the old army surplus mummy bags and uh, there wasn't a lot to them, but that's what we had and that's what we used. Uh, this is an amazing bag. Uh, I have Parkinson's disease, so cold affects me a lot more than might the average person. And um, I need a warm bag, but the, having the ability to adjust the uh, baffles as you need or open the bottom zipper or a number of things if it's too warm, all those adjustments make this bag very versatile and uh, as to whether you need to tighten up this baffle it depends just on how cold it is. I uh, live in a desert area even though we have mountains also but the desert area gets really quite cold in the winter. Uh, freezing is not uncommon. Uh, so that's another reason I got this bag because it gives me that option uh, with being in the desert or the mountains and being able to adjust the, the uh, warmth of the bag again with those baffles and the zippers 
in this uh, neck baffle. But let me show you what the experience of getting this bag jammed into the small little duffel bag is. It's a bit of a process. Now, when you do this, you do want to start at the foot area because if you start at the head, air gets trapped in there and it's really, really hard to get out. This microfiber is water repellent. If you pour a bunch of water on there, you're gonna be wet. There you go, it's almost jammed in there, but for the purposes of video time, uh, we'll, we'll cut it there. This is literally a two pound bag that'll take you down to 10 degrees, and if you sleep warm, you can push that to zero pretty easily. It's got a little handle there. Also, one other thing about this bag is Western Mountaineering, of course, it has its own logo. They send you a laundry bag to put in your bag. So the best way to store your sleeping bag is under your bed with a little bed skirt or something so it's completely open. However, if you have pets or anything or any concerns about damage there, uh, then you of course don't want to do that. So what I do is I stuff this bag into this big laundry sack and it's loose enough to where it does not compress the down because over time, theoretically, the down can get compressed. However, I've read a recent blog on Western Mountaineering that says if you squash the down and you leave it compressed for a long, long time, as long as it's not wet and you uncompress it, it should actually survive. And that was from Western Mountaineering's site, but I prefer to leave everything as fluffy as possible because these bags are expensive. They are an investment. And you can see, that the bag is not expanding anymore. It's in this nice little fluffy bag here, and it's a great storage option wherever you might live. There you go, that is the Western Mountaineering Versalite sleeping bag. Can't recommend it enough for pretty chilly nights. You pull this thing out and it foofs up really quick so you don't have to fluff uh, Lazarus to get that thing back there. As my dad said, he uses it in the desert. It's pretty chilly there and he's Parkinson so he suffers a little bit more cold. This bag does very, very well. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I am a polar explorer and professional traveler. Please like, comment, and subscribe on my video. And also please support me on Venmo. PayPal, and Patreon. Thank you very much for watching.